Oh, one to your right, one to your right. Zute. Mom? No, you baka. It, it is I, I the, the PUBG Mobile God. What do you want from me? You have retired from competitive, but your job is not done yet. You, you must, must educate, educate the, the masses, masses on how, how to get, get better. Also, ESL is paying you money to make these analysis videos, videos so, so you better, better do a good, good job. You're right. I must share my knowledge for the betterment of all the aspiring PUBG Mobile competitive players out there. Yes, this is my calling. Also, I like, I like your, your hat. hat. Oh, thanks. I got it from- I don't care. Now, now get, get to, to work. work. Hey, what is up, Zoo Nation? I got some good news for you guys. So I have partnered with ESL to bring you guys weekly analysis videos. That's right, weekly analysis videos. I'll be doing these videos once a week, so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you want to watch more. And each week, we will be covering a different topic. I'm going to call these the focus breakdowns. So without further ado, let's jump into this week's focus breakdown. For this week's focus breakdown, we are going to go over the key elements needed to successfully win close range compound fights. This skill is especially useful when your drop spot is being contested or you need to breach a certain compound in zone. We will be using this hot drop fight from the ESL Mobile Open and Novo for today's focus breakdown. Pause. So here we have a 4v4 fight between two teams both contesting the Novo area. We will be analyzing this fight from Team 8's POV. Here is an overview of the fight. Team 8 will be referred to as Team A and the opposing team will be referred to as Team B. The very first step is to gather information safely and be aware of not just the enemy's positions, but your teammates' positions as well. For Team A, all of the enemies on Team B are within footstep distance, so they should have a very good idea of the enemy's positioning. Some do's and don'ts on info gathering. Do make sure you are very safe behind cover and not exposing yourself to a potential off angle. Mark enemy locations if possible. If it is too risky to mark enemies, use specific callouts such as two-story red building, second floor. Repeat the different info gathered by your teammates so everyone has a clear idea of the enemy's positioning. Don't cross over into open areas and always use the building cover as much as possible when moving from position to position. If you hear enemy footsteps, do not stay still if they have heard your footsteps. This will make it very easy for them to grenade you since you are staying in one spot. And don't make confident callouts unless you are certain. It is okay to say things like, I think there is still an enemy here if you are unsure. Take special note of this player from Team A due to his positioning. This will definitely come into play later. The opposing team, Team 16, ends up getting the opening knock, but you'll soon see TLU here get an amazing counter knock. Right here at the very last second, he manages to land an amazing headshot with the AK onto the opposing player. Now the fight is reset to a 3v3, but TLU is about to make a crucial decision. And just like that, within seconds of this team fight breaking out, the team fight was lost for Team A. This player had an amazing trade knock in the engagement, but one small lapse in judgment costed the entire team the fight. Here you guys can see how Team B will easily be able to get the revive on their knock player and reset the fight to a 4v2 situation. 
As for Team A, the situation is looking very dire and their best option is to disengage and that is what they end up doing. Now, let's reset this fight back to the 3v3 situation when both teams had just only one player down. Pop quiz! If you guys are Team A, what would you do in this situation? I'm looking at you too, Paul and Glitter. You have 10 seconds. Go. Remember, in an actual engagement, you will have even less time to think, and it will be under even more pressure. Time's up. Let's see how you guys did. If you were unsure on how to approach this team fight, the best way to go about it is to focus on the positioning. The positioning of the enemy players and the positioning of one's teammates dictate the role and opportunities that one will be responsible for in any situation on the battlefield. First, let's take a look at this player. His position is crucial and he must hold this spot to cover the cross to prevent the enemy team from getting the revive. If you guys thought he should use smokes to cross over, that would be incorrect. Using smokes to cross is still a risk, but even if he were able to cross safely for the revive, that is a fundamental mistake. He would give up the control he had of the cross, which would allow the enemy team to take more ground control, get the revive, and potentially punish the player in a 2v1 situation. This player's role is to control the position he is in and pass information to his teammates as he is the closest to the majority of the enemy team. This player is the furthest from the fight and is under the least amount of pressure. Due to his positioning, his role is to direct his teammates and to call the next play. Lastly, this player is in a pretty isolated 1v1 with his closest enemy counterpart right across from him. He does, however, have some slight supporting sight lines from his teammate. His role would be to apply pressure safely and to disrupt enemy communication or to force the enemy to adjust to what he is doing. Many times in 1v1 situations, players just remain idle and quiet, which do not add much benefit to the team. In an ideal situation, Team B is slow to make any moves, and the furthest player from Team A has time to run back for a car and drive in for a safe revive. But this may take too long, and the enemy team might take advantage of this and press a 2v1 since this player lost the support line from his back. Assuming both teams are equally skilled and neither team makes a mistake giving the other team an easy opening, this player should move in to pressure the 1v1, allowing his teammate to cross down safely to add more value to the fight. Now that we are in an even 3v3 situation, there are numerous different ways to continue the fight. Now, there are no clear-cut answers on what to do next because PUBG Mobile is a game of ever-changing factors and no two fights are the same. In order to succeed in this game, teams must be able to assess situations quickly and be able to adapt to it. Of course, player skill also has a huge impact to a team's success. Zute. Yes, Dad? I am not your dad. Why is it so dark in here? I'm gaming. Duh. No one games with the lights on. True. Anyways, good job on the first video. Thanks. This is my very first one. Your subscribers better like and subscribe to your channel, or I will curse them to never get circles and all of their future games. That's a bit harsh. Maybe you're right. Anyways, you still suck at close range fights. Ha 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 ha!